This is Twit. Exciting news from Mark Gurman at 9to5Mac. He reported that battery life might be a problem for the Apple Watch, and he's joining us now. How are you doing, Mark Gurman? Good. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Now, you reported sources that are spilling the beans on Apple Watch battery life. What are they telling you? Yeah, so what we're hearing is that the battery life is not going to beat any records. It's not going to be much better than any existing uh, watches on the market. They're shooting for 19 hours of combined use throughout the day, uh, which combines like active use and keeping on your wrist without using it. We're hearing that it will be able to run just on a clock face at 60 frames per second for about three to four hours, um, which means that you can combine throughout a day, look at the clock for three or four hours, and it will still work. No one's really going to stare at the watch face for three hours because the watch, when it's not in use, when it's just like sitting on your arm, the screen uses the different sensors like the accelerometer motion sensor uh, to keep the display off. So we're also hearing that intense app usage like games or video apps or anything that requires a lot of power, you can go for up to two and a half hours straight, light app usage or regular normal usage about three and a half to four hours. The exercise, which you're showing right now, will work for four hours straight. So if you want to exercise for four hours on a single charge, you'll be able to do that. Now, is this partly the result of the, of the uh, possibility that Apple kind of went too far with the performance. I mean, it's a high-performance device with a retina-quality screen that re refreshes at 60 frames per second. Isn't that overkill for a watch? Shouldn't they have sort of dialed that down to boost battery life? You know, it's a decision they obviously made during the development process. They want to go high-end on the components and the parts, or they want to go low-end. And Apple's a company that always makes trade-offs to provide a better experience. And in their opinion, the sharper display and the faster processor, and we're told the chip is almost equivalent to the A5 in an iPod Touch or the iPhone 4S or an iPad 2. So they feel the performance in the screen outweighs needing to charge it every night. Now, your sources are getting their information about what I assume are brand new Apple Watches. Of course, batteries degrade over time. And won't this kill the resale market for Apple Watches? And if the first generation can't be sold because the, uh, the battery life isn't so great, will people be uh, uh, disincentivized, I guess you could call it, to upgrade to the second generation Apple Watch when it comes out eventually? I mean, the battery might be replaceable within the Apple Genius Bar or some third-party markets, uh, just like the iPhone and iPad. So I don't think that's really going to be uh, a resale issue. Now, these numbers were Apple's targets as of development in 2014, so last year. So the watch is coming out uh, by end of March. So um, these numbers could be a bit off, seeing that they probably fixed some things or changed them, some things up. Um, but again, these are targets. This is what they were shooting for. This is what they wanted. No one knows or it's to be seen if they're actually going to hit those numbers. That's now, what they, that's their goals. I see. Now, you reported that the uh, battery problem is what delayed the Apple Watch from shipping during the holiday season last year. It had been really ideal for them to ship just before Christmas. They didn't, right. apparently because of the battery issue, probably in part. There may be in other issues. Did they fix something uh, that will enable them to be satisfied with battery life by the time they ship in March, or, or, or are they just uh, deciding to ship it in March even with the problems? Right. So we're told that they originally planned to ship the watch by late fall, so November-ish, right before the holidays, as you said. They were having problems with their battery supplier, and they worked those out. They were also having trouble getting the inductive charging to charge up the watch as quickly as they would like, and they actually developed multiple versions of the charging puck that you can see on the screen right now. They have a metal version, which they're showing on their website, and they also develop a plastic version. It's to be seen if there's different performance between those two variations. Um, I don't think so. It's possible the plastic models for the $350 sport version and the metals for the stainless steel and gold models. Um, but yeah, it's likely they worked out all the kinks and are hitting their goals or, or something close to it. They wouldn't ship unless they, they did. Mark Gurman breaks news at 9to5Mac.com, and you can follow him on Twitter at Mark Gurman. Mark Gurman, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right.